Welcome, everybody. Now, can everybody hear me? Yes, I'm getting some thumbs from up the back. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, so, hi, everybody, and welcome to Zen Energy Presents the South Australian Home Battery Scheme. Uh, my name is Matthew Dewhurst. Um, so, I'm the marketing manager for Zen, and I'll be your MC for tonight. Um, I'm glad to say we've got an almost full house, um, and we've got lots of special guests that you'll hear from. Um, so with so many important people to hear from, we do have a tight schedule. Um, so I'll ask that everyone keep any questions to the end, uh, where we'll have a bit of a Q&A session. Um, you all would have received a gift bag on the table in front of you when you arrived. Um, this bag's got flyers on the products you'll hear about tonight. Um, and if anything gets you interested to get your own personalised quote uh, on battery storage from Zen or even solar, uh, there's a simple request a quote form in that bag as well. Um, so simply fill it out and leave it with a Zen Energy representative before you leave tonight and we'll be in touch. Um, so a reminder that tonight is a chance to hear from uh, Richard Turner, who's the founder and head of brand of communications for Zen Energy. Um, Graham Galletley, the senior business development manager for Ratesetter, who's a scheme facilitator. Uh, Nicholas Lurch, head of field sales for Sonner in Australia. Uh, and Alan Collar, Director of Grid Services and Business Development for Solar Edge. Uh, we've also had an additional speaker confirmed just this afternoon. Um, Sam Crafter, Executive Director of Energy Implementation for the Department of Energy and Mining from the Government of South Australia, so you'll hear from him as well. Um, the event is also proudly supported by the New Venture Institute at Flinders University. Um, so as I said, we've got a very tight schedule, so we'll jump straight into it. Um, if you can please welcome our first guest, Angela DeFabio, Head of Business Engagement for our event partner, NVI Flinders. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. Um, as Matthew mentioned, my name is Angela DeFabio, Head of Business Engagement for Flinders New Venture Institute, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all here this evening um, for the South Australian Home Battery Scheme in in Information Evening. Um, we are delighted to be working with companies such as Zen um, to support this event, um, but first I'd like to acknowledge that we meet here on the lands of the Ghana people and that we respect their traditions and their elders past, present and future. Um, a little bit of housekeeping, toilets are located on the other side of the lifts. Um, please no eating and drinking in the lecture theatre. There are electrical components that we just need to make sure that we keep safe. Um, in the event of an emergency, you'll hear the first warning sound. It's um, to get you prepared, and if there's a second warning sound, I'd like you all to calmly evacuate to the grass area located on the western side of the building. Um, Flinders at Tonsley, we're proud to be located here in the Tonsley Innovation Precinct alongside um, companies such as Zen. It's a beautiful space, and I don't know if any of you have had the the pleasure of going out into the, the MAB. Um, it's been a wonderful rejuvenation of an old Chrysler site. Um, Renew LSA have done an amazing site, but the interesting thing, and it's very in keeping with tonight, is that it's a very sustainable um, footprint. So um, by reusing the, the site from the old Chrysler site, they have been able to save um, significant amount of CO2 emissions equivalent to 25,000 cars in one year just by re reusing um, those uh, existing assets. So it's um, a great place to be working and it's very fitting to have innovative companies such as Zen co-located here with Flinders University um, along many others. Um, a little bit about New Venture Institute, so those that haven't heard of us, what we call ourselves as the NVI, um, very fitting again, we sit alongside innovation and enterprise. Um, we sit firmly in the new business creation ecosystem um, and we are there to help build capabilities and um, driving thinking differently, um, thinking outside the square. We've been in existence for only five short years, but we've helped create over 300 startups and attracting over $4 million in investment. So it's something that we're very proud of. Our programs are designed to align with all sorts of new industries, including healthy ageing, smart cities, um, disadvantaged youth, 
um, and we deliver a lot of our programs not only here in Adelaide Metropolitan but also in the regional areas of Mount Gambier and we also now have popped up in Byron Bay, New South Wales. Um, we're also in discussion and, and relevant to tonight um, looking at um, working with other clean, um, clean energy providers um, looking to bring international talent here to South Australia. It's an amazing place to be um, located at this point and there's just so many future industries that are really, really exciting. For your own personal development, um, just some thinking in terms of um, new opportunities. Um, if you want to upskill your innovative thinking, um, we've got a professional certificate in innovation. So in just six short weeks, you can learn how to discover um, and understand problems, like really understand stand the problems, find innovative solutions, using creative thinking um, for solutions to meet the needs of your customers and also perhaps create new industries. Um, it's a six-week course. It's intensive, immersive, but it's like all of our products. It's very transformative. Um, for those with companies and um, those particularly in manufacturing, um, if you're thinking of new ways to compete globally, um, looking at some of the methodologies of Industry 4.0, we've got um, an advanced manufacturing accelerator program again. It's a six-week intensive program, um, but the idea is that you look at moving from a traditional manufacturer to a smart um, manufacturer. So you investigate using things like sensor technology, IoT devices and, and the like, and there are some significant opportunities. But the real unique thing is that we sit in a university and we've got some amazing researchers doing some fantastic work and you've got access to those laboratories and getting into the brains of those amazing researchers and also um, PhD students as required. Our flagship product I'd like to introduce you to Flinders Enterprise Consulting. Um, it involves final year students and MBA students. Um, it's a springboard for businesses, those out there in industry who want to solve business challenges, um, but really valuable for the students is it's giving them soft skills for when they go out to industry and um, um, hit the real world, as they say. Um, so it's a consulting-based product. Um, the students sit with a company for a semester and um, looking to make recommendations that are tangible, real, and that are able to be implemented straight away. So if you know of any business or if you yourselves have got a business or a business challenge, please engage with us. We'd love to um, um, put the challenge upon some um, really high-performing students to create some um, interesting um, recommendations to you. So that's only a small sample of what we do. We do many other things. Um, please connect with us, um, www.nviflinders.com.au. Um, we are here to help you increase your capability and help you navigate what your future success can be. Um, I have got printed collateral here out there on the registration table. I will be here this evening as well if you want to have a chat to me. Um, and I also hope that you gain a lot from tonight's very informative um, information session. Thank you for letting us host tonight and um, we hope um, you enjoy this evening. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Angela. Um, as an important part of making tonight happen for everybody in this room, I do hope everybody here can check out what NVI Flinders has to offer and the great work they do. Um, our next guest, as you'll see on the screen for tonight, is Richard Turner. Uh, so Richard is the founder of Zen Energy. Uh, he was awarded the 2010 Ernst & Young Australian Entrepreneur of the Year uh, for the clean tech sector and is also a pioneer of the modern solar and battery storage industry in Australia. Uh, Richard has a Bachelor of Business degree from the University of South Australia uh, and now is working with the amalgamated Symec Energy Australia uh, as a Head of Brand and Communications. Please join me in giving Richard a warm welcome to the stage. Thank you, Matt, and a big welcome and really a welcome. I know a lot of you are past customers of Zen, so really a big welcome to all of you and, and we hope to have uh, you again as customers with home battery soon. So very excited about this. This is, is really an exciting time for the industry. 
Um, I've been around this industry long enough to remember the first subsidies that came into the industry. If you remember, probably 14, 15 years ago now, John Howard introduced the first $4,000 rebate, and then it went to $8,000, and then the feed-in tariffs came in, and then renewable energy certificates came in. But the purpose of all that was to scale up the industry, scale up the manufacturing, and we've seen what that's done to solar panels, and we're going to see it again now with home batteries. And this is the start of the market. It's a really exciting time, um, and we've got three world-leading providers with us tonight in Sonon here, um, now manufacturing in South Australia, which is hugely exciting, uh, Solar Edge with LG, and also Ratesetter, which are the finance partners for the, uh, the home battery scheme and, and really innovative. So I, I thought there's been a lot happen at Zen the last few years, and some of you will be wondering how it all connects you know, what's Sanjeev Gupta doing with us now? What's Roscano doing with us? So I thought I'll just give you five or ten minutes, a, a quick background update of where Zen is, and then we'll hand over to these guys to take you through what's an exciting presentation or set of presentations tonight. <clears throat> so as most of you would know, we established ourselves in 2004, well before there was any modern solar industry, and we've really seen this um, go all the way from back then to, to where it is now. Um, hard to imagine from my kid's cubby house I'd have Sanjeev Gupta as my chairman um, 15 years later, but it's been an amazing journey. Um, we've done over 30,000, just in South Australia here, over 30,000 homes and business installations. Uh, again, an incredible journey. Um, we've developed all the innovative processes and things around that to ensure the jobs are done properly the first time and, and with the best equipment um, we have. We're still proudly uh, Adelaide-based, very proudly Adelaide-based. We have a very big Melbourne office now with our energy markets team, our energy developments team. Uh, some of our corporate development people are in Sydney now. We have a big office in Sydney, but still proud to say our head office is here in Adelaide. When you look at the history of this, when we started this business, solar was about a 12 to 15 year payback, then, yeah, which is about where batteries are now unsubsidised. When you add, uh, when, when the market got to about 10 years, uh, so back at 12 to 15 years you had the early adopters, when the market got to a 10 year payback, um, the market started to move and batteries with subsidies are about that point now. When you combine solar and batteries together with subsidies, you're getting down to seven years or under in payback. And when we got to that point with the solar industry, we really saw the market take off. That's when we saw mass buying programs and the community really engaging. And that's about where we are now, which is obviously why you're all here, you know, to see the technology and it's really at, at that level. Critically, you need to be aware when you're buying these products, and you'll hear about this from the manufacturers tonight, this is a, a, a 10 to 20 year investment. Now, you need to really be aware especially when it's new technology. You want a company that you know is going to be around for the long haul. I hope that we've you know, provided our own credibility. We've been here since the beginning. We're still here, and we plan to be here a lot longer. And we've been putting a lot of effort into securing our company's future, as you'll hear about shortly, to make sure we're here for the journey with you. So when you are buying these things, make sure you're buying it from a company that you know is going to be here to support you for the next uh, uh, period of your investment. So we've gone, you know, talked a bit about our past. We'll show you a bit about our future. So what's been happening, the GFG Alliance, which is the Gupta family group, so it's a Sanjeev Gupta's company, um, has four arms to the business. So there's Liberty, as you know, is their heavy industries business, which includes the steel works and the big aluminium smelters uh, around the country, the steel recycling centres. There's CIMEC. CIMEC is an acronym for shipping, infrastructure, mining, energy and commodities. So we call it the energy and natural resources business. Now, CIMEC approached us after they bought, or at the same time virtually, as they bought the Liberty Steelworks here. They knew from the model, and, and in fact, when Ross Garno joined our company in 2015, one of the, the projects that Ross and his team were working on was trying to save Arium, <clears throat> the previous owners of the Steelworks. Um, and the plan that we had to save Arium was reducing their cost of energy dramatically. And to do that, we had to deploy large-scale renewables around the Air Peninsula and feed it directly in. Um, now, that was a long-term plan. Arium didn't have the cash reserves to last for three years. They went into administration, as we know. And when Sanjeev Gupta's group came into the country, they went into the data room where the secret documents are, found our energy plan and said, my God, this is what we've just done in the UK to save British steel and British aluminium. 
And when you add solar into the mix in Australia, Australia, you'll reduce the cost of energy by 40 to 50% and will make this business here globally competitive. So as soon as they took on Liberty, they approached us and said, well, you've got the technology, the grid scale batteries, the people, no point in reinventing the wheel, let's put our companies together and, uh, and create what is now called Cymec Energy Australia. Um, and we're now the energy arm of the GFG Alliance. So we're building massive new generation for Australia, solar farms, grid batteries, wind farms, hydro facilities to power our own industry. So the mandate from our board is get the price of power down and, uh, and make this heavy industry in Australia energy competitive. So um, Zen Energy is now a division of Cymec Energy Australia. So I'll take you, take you through that. And just a bit on the GFG Alliance itself. So the GFG Alliance is a, glo a group, global grouping of businesses owned by Sanjeev Gupta and his father, Pardaman Gupta. Uh, they're currently the largest aluminium manufacturer in Western Europe, a major steel manufacturer in the UK, India, Australia and the United States, and the largest engineering company in the UK covering automotive, aerospace and defence. They're the largest car parts, automotive car parts manufacturer in the UK and when Sanjeev says we're going to build electric cars in Australia, he's, he's dead keen and uh, they have recruited the project manager to do that and they'll be assembling cars in, in uh, Melbourne and Adelaide hopefully in the near future. So as I said, supplying GFG Alliance's own energy needs allows us to develop and operate large scale energy generation across Australia. We then, so we build these massive solar farms and wind farms and batteries, and then we leverage the scale of that and share the benefits of that with other industry uh, and large commercial companies. And uh, I'm very pleased to say the prosperity of the state that we see on an energy forefront, when you look at our opportunity under the fossil fuel regime, where we had the worst coal and gas reserves in the country, we're at the end of the electricity grid. When we move forward to a renewable energy economy, we actually have the best renewable, uh, renewable energy resource in the world. Uh, so we actually go from bottom of the ladder, as Ross Garno says, to the top of the ladder. So we are going to see a big shift in prosperity in the state in the next few years. So I've just been through that. So our leadership, so we have Sanjeev as our chairman, Ross Garno as our president, Mark Barrington, one of the senior guys from AGL, as many people from the existing retailers and network companies uh, shifting to Zen to be part of the future. So we've got a strong past, a strong future. We've got a team of industry leaders and, uh, and people that want to be part of something bigger. And, and that includes you, our customers. So really important to have you here tonight. And just to finish off from me, a quote from, from us chairman. The high cost of energy for Australian consumers is debilitating for the economy and a crying shame for a country so rich in resources. We clearly see a need for industrial groups and energy generators to work together with our partners, we can deliver a step change in the power industry, bring innovative solutions and new projects to dramatically reduce the cost of dispatchable power. So, uh, so we're on a mission. We need you. Um, we need our suppliers. And, uh, and I'll hand you back to Matthew to, uh, to introduce the rest of the night. So thank you very much for being here. Uh, thank you, Richard. Um, I know it can be difficult to condense such a large and important story into a few slides, but I think you've done pretty well. And as those who might have heard from Richard before, it can also be very difficult to keep him to 10 minutes, so he's done very well tonight as well. Um, our next guest is Sam Crafter. So he was our special guest for tonight that not many of you knew was, knew was coming. Uh, Sam's the Executive Director managing the design implementation of South Australian Government initiatives, including the Home Battery Scheme. Uh, Sam joined the SA Government after a career in various public affairs, policy, community and government relation roles. Um, before joining Santos, Sam spent eight years in working in state and federal government. Uh, please welcome Sam to the stage. Thanks very much, Matt. Thanks very much for having us here tonight. Um, I guess my job is to just set the scene, if you like, for the program and, uh, and then hand it over to the the industry people who are busily uh, implementing and working with us on it at the moment. Um, so uh, the context is that just about 12 months to the day, the, uh, there was an election obviously and the incoming government had a, a range of policies. One of those was to develop a home battery scheme. Uh, and the parameters up there are, are exactly what they, they set us the, uh, the challenge, if you like, of, of doing is coming up with a program that could deliver batteries to 40,000 households in South Australia. We had a $100 million um, program to be able to deliver that through subsidies. Um, and what we were able to do then was to look at how best we do that. And what, what came from that 
and we'll talk about this in a bit more detail, is um, we were able to work with the Clean Energy Finance Corporation, which is a federal government body that's set up to try and um, finance and help finance uh, innovative projects, predominantly in the renewable energy space, but also in, um, uh, in other low carbon industries as well. So we um, were able to get the program up and, and launched at the end of October. Um, really tonight, I'll just run through some of the, the basic situation and give you a bit of an update on how we're, how we're travelling. So, um, the, the objectives of the scheme uh, was to obviously have an impact for the households that get the batteries, um, but also um, what we're trying to be able to do is have a broader impact for the South Australian market. So, at the moment we've got about 220,000 households that have um, solar on them in South Australia. Um, we think there's um, a large portion of those that can benefit from this. Uh, there are some people that got in early and have got very attractive feed-in tariffs and we, we realise that for some people having a battery and changing that arrangement may not work for you economically as well. But even factoring that in, there's a very large number of houses that, uh, that are there. And what we want to be able to do really is harness that solar energy and be able to capture that through storage and then be able to use that at a time when we need it most. So that takes the pressure off the rest of the network as well. So there's sort of a, a, a lower prices mo motivation for the whole of the market as well as the benefits that individuals can get through this. So everyone who has a, uh, a NIMI, so one subsidy per home, is eligible for this. Um, and there's also some incentives for concession holders. So energy concession holders um, uh, receive a higher subsidy. We'll get to that in, in just a minute. Uh, you do have to be connected to the network. So this isn't um, uh, dealing with off-grid solutions uh, for the, with this program. Um, there, there are other things that government does around that, but this is focused about people who are connected to the, the current network. How much is the subsidy? So we decided um, in doing the work, we did quite a lot of work about how best to do this, but really it's, we've landed on um, uh, around the size of the battery. So the bigger the battery, the bigger the subsidy, which really goes to the motivation around having a broader impact. So from a, a statewide perspective, the larger the storage that we can get into the system, the better. Obviously from an individual perspective, you need to be able to work through what works best for your household uh, in doing that. It's capped at $6,000 per system installed um, and we have made it clear, so if you look at the numbers there, it's um, for a concession holder it's $600 per kilowatt hour, $500 per kilowatt hour for other households. Um, what the government's made clear is that we are trying to generate interest in this from the beginning and that over time that subsidy will come back. Uh, well, obviously if you do the maths, uh, it doesn't get us 40,000 batteries um, if you're going for a medium scale sort of battery. So. What we've wanted to do is really kickstart that. We we're able to um, put in place, or the government was very keen to put in place some incentives around uh, manufacture and assembly in South Australia. So we we're able to see a program where Sonnen's come into Adelaide and a couple of other providers as well, um, Iguana and Alpha ESS. And that's leading to about 450 jobs in South Australia over the next um, four or five years as well. So there's sort of had to be an economic benefit as part of this. Um, and, but what we were able to do um, was really to be able to look to um, to get this up and running and get it incentivised for people to, to come in early uh, and get a benefit, if you like, from being an early mover with the subsidy scheme. And then we think, and hopefully uh, can see a trajectory where over time with competition we'll see prices come down and hopefully the subsidy can, can reduce in line with that. So uh, finance, so we touched on the fact that Clean Energy Finance Corp will come on board. We have worked with Ratesetter, so Ratesetter, um, we'll obviously talk about um, where they're up to a bit later, but they've been working with the Clean Energy Finance Corp for some time. Uh, and they're administering that finance program with them. What they're also doing is administering the subsidy for us. So it's a, it's a smooth process through our website that where we connect and make it an easy process or as easy as we can for people to be able to access both our subsidy and potentially the finance product. Now, financing is available. People can choose how they finance the battery and the, the remainder of the battery uh, and indeed solar if they need that. Clean Energy Finance Corps worked with Ratesetter to put a very competitive offer into the market but there's, no one is compelled to use that offering. It's complete, people can finance it any way they, they choose uh, and, uh, and they're able to access the subsidy um, even if they choose not to use the finance product. So whilst, we whilst we're very happy with what's happened with Clean Energy Finance Corp and Rate Setter and that we think it's a good offering, uh, we do, you know, it, is, it is up to people to work out how to, to fix that gap themselves. Um, uh, the, the cost effectively once the subsidy has been taken out. Um, it, in terms of that, I'll let Ratesetter talk to the specifics of how that works and the, the terms, but there's flexibility around term and also how much you borrow to be able to do that. So accessing the scheme um, really comes down to the first information point is around, well, obviously, nights like tonight are fantastic where people can get information. The home battery scheme 
website up there is an area where we've tried to provide as much information as we can. It also lists all of the providers, so the people that are um, qualified and able to, to provide systems and install them, uh, and also the battery types and, and that are available as well. So, um, and also there's a link directly through to that finance product that's there as well. So, in terms of product eligibility, we wanted to make sure that we were putting or enabling people to have systems that can be used in the future. So, effectively, we're looking for smart products, smart battery products. Obviously, they have to be safe uh, and reliable. Um, and what we've done around is we've sort of looked at virtual power plant capable. So, um, we think that in the future, there's going to be some value that can be captured by having a battery uh, and potentially joining that up with other people who have batteries to be able to provide services in, into the system that in time we think the market will start to pay for. So at the moment those products aren't developed, there's some trials underway, some of the big retailers are working on those um, and there are some products there. But we didn't think they were developed to a point where we said people needed to join one of those. What we wanted to do is give people the equipment so that as that develops they're able to join at their, and if you like, um, hopefully some competitive offers come from different people around how that's structured. Uh, and then they're able to choose where they where they join into those programs. So it's very important that we didn't have a rush of batteries going out into the market that weren't going to be usable for future products in in the next um, you know three or four or five years as they come available. That, it's not a perfect exercise, and we, we can't completely future proof by any means. But that's the that's what we've done around setting the standards for the products that are available through the scheme. Um, just uh, rushing through a bit, but trying to hit the the ten minute line as well. Um, so in terms of how we're travelling. Um, there isn't really anything to benchmark it against. So everyone keeps saying, is it going well? And, uh, and I don't really know how to answer that. Uh, we think it's going well because we've been able to get um, a range of uh, different battery providers into the program. So in addition to the three I mentioned before, we've now got 11 different sorts of batteries that are available. Um, we've got 73 different providers in, the, in there. So that's everyone from uh, installation companies to battery operating companies who are prepared really to be a provider, we wanted to make sure that people could take responsibility for the interaction with the customer from start to finish. And so there's a number of people that are able to do that. They have to go through a process to be qualified as a system provider. Um, they have to go through an industry code of conduct to be able to do that as well. So we've hit, we think we've set a, a reasonable bar, but a reasonably high bar as well, so that we make sure that we're getting um, people that are able to do that and look after customers properly. Um, we've got, uh, we've had a, a large amount of publicity, if you like, or driving people to try and find out more um, through some of the work that we've done to promote the scheme. We've had 1,300 systems approved, which means that they're in the process of being installed. 450 are already installed. Uh, we're seeing the most popular battery sizes are between 9 and 13 kilowatts, but as you can see, with 188 different battery models, you can, there's a battery for every size and configuration that, uh, that you may need. So it is important that you look at your individual circumstances. Um, it's important that you have a conversation with one of these providers. Our website's really about information, but as you go forward, it's about encouraging interaction with that provider to work out what's best for your individual circumstances in terms of battery. Uh, and, um, and you know, for some people, that's a very, very straightforward process. And in fact, some people can probably do that through a very simple interaction over the phone, et cetera, if you know your situation. Other people will get people to come out and have a look at that. We also obviously encourage people to get a range of quotes. There's a lot of providers there, there's a lot of competition, and it's important that you, you have a look and see what's available for, and what might suit your, best, uh, your, best, your needs best. But that pretty much covers uh, my stuff for tonight, and um, we'll be around a bit later for some questions, I think, if we get there. So thanks very much. Thanks, Sam. Um, so we are honoured to have a representative from the government here to talk about the energy initiatives. Um, 188 batteries and 73 providers, it can be pretty daunting, can't it? But I suppose that's why we're here tonight. Um, so the next person I'd like to introduce uh, to the stage is Graeme Galletley. Uh, Rate Setter is facilitating the home battery scheme for the government and Graeme is the Senior Business Development Manager for Rate Setter's Renewable Energy Product Offering. Uh, with five years of experience in finance and lending, he's passionate about providing education on the cost of lending uh, and helping borrowers understand finance literature. Uh, please welcome Graham to the stage. Firstly, uh, thanks to Matt and the, the team for Zen for inviting us along tonight. It's uh, great to get in front of everyone and it's certainly a great turnout. So I hope everyone's uh, locked in for 
10 good minutes. Um, I'll do my best to keep it under 10 minutes, so also another one that does like to chat. Um, first of all, I want to talk a little bit about rate setter. Um, we were appointed by the South Australian Government to facilitate the home battery program, which was a fantastic opportunity, not only for rate setter, but obviously to introduce our finance partnership as well through the Clean Energy Finance Corporation. Uh, now, we operate a little bit differently to a traditional bank, which I'll sort of go into a little bit more detail shortly. Um, we're what's known in the market as a peer-to-peer -peer lender. So I'll explain a bit about peer-to-peer -peer lending because I know obviously there's a, that's obviously a very unique concept as well for, from most people. Um, as Sam mentioned though, we, we are funded um, by the uh, Clean Energy Finance Corporation in our renewable division. So it's obviously a very good partnership uh, with RATESER, but obviously with the Clean Energy Finance Corporation um, as well. Now, in terms of peer-to-peer -peer lending, um, as mentioned, I'll try and explain this as quickly as I possibly can um, in, in a short period of time, but effectively, in short, the money that's getting uh, borrowed to an individual is not rate setters' money. It is either an investor's, uh, obviously it could be anyone from a mum and dad investor, anyone through to a large corporation, someone like the Clean Energy Finance Corporation. So, in short, the money that's being borrowed is not rate setters. Effectively, what rate setter does, we provide the platform and the facility to be able to facilitate that loan between a borrower and a lender. So again, an opportunity, if someone was actually looking investing in rate setter, there is an opportunity there as well. <laughs> but again, th that's effectively how peer-to-peer -peer, uh, lending works in, in a small, self, uh, small scale concept. A little bit about the home battery scheme, it's probably gonna be touching a little bit more exactly as, as Sam mentioned. So obviously the goal of the program is to try and achieve 40,000 homes uh, to, with a battery installation, um, obviously with $100 million in gov government some, uh, uh, government funded subsidies. Um, now Sam also talked about the um, virtual power plant, which th the systems under the program have to have uh, an ability to connect to a VPP or to be considered an eligible system. So again, when you're speaking to the likes of Zen Energy, they'll be able to explain that in, in more detail. Now a little bit about the renewable energy marketplace. So um, there is certainly multiple different types of options to be able to afford a system. And, and one of the main feedbacks that we hear from customers um, under, the, under the scheme, and, and not only just the scheme nationwide, it, it is about the affordability to be able to afford a system. So not just a solar system, it's then obviously migrating into the purchase of a battery system as well. Now, our, our rate set of financing offering that's funded by the Clean Energy Finance Corporation is a, a, a fixed interest rate with a market rate of 5.5% under this program. So as long as you're purchasing a battery at the time of you can be buying solar as well, that is the offering that's on the table um, through, through the, the scheme. Uh, what we are very proud to do uh, is to really try and redirect the education on the cost of finance. Now, the cost of finance is not the interest rate. There are so many more factors that go into the cost of finance. Looking at the fees, looking at the structure of the loan in terms of the, if it's over a shorter term or over a longer term, looking at the compounding interest that you'll be paying, that's the only way to truly represent how you're actually comparing a loan option. What's very common and prominent in the industry, um, you'll see uh, things like interest-free, credit cards, and certainly people redrawing off their mortgage. So again, the decision lies with you in terms of what you would like to do. What I'm going to talk to you about um, shortly is a little bit about rate setters product offering and I guess why we are different and why we are appointed difference, not only under this program, but nationwide in terms of what we represent. So a little bit about the subsidy and the finance process. Um, under the scheme, you, you do have to interact with a provider. You can't come to rate setter um, to be able to get a quote effectively as such. You have to go through an approved provider and it's certainly the best method. The reason why it's the best method, they're the ones that can actually do an analysis on your property, on your utility bill to recommend the right products for you. So there's no point in trying to come to rate setter first to try and get approved for a $15,000 loan only to find out that the system that you're gonna get installed was only cost you $6,000. So it really sort of defeats the purpose to come directly to us for finance first. So if you were to go to Zen Energy to get a quote, they will generate what's known as a quote record for you. That is effectively a subsidy record, which will take you back through the Home Battery Scheme website, which I'll show you through shortly. At, that, at, the end, at that point, then you can make a decision whether you'd like to apply for finance. It's all done on one email. You can accept your subsidy, which will take you no more than two minutes. To accept the subsidy, effectively, you're just completing an online ID verification to accept it, um, and then the finance application can assist from there. Once you're approved for your subsidy and or your finance, uh, there is effectively no cost for getting your finance approved. Your approval will sit there until your installation has occurred. Once your installation, uh, installation has occurred, your provider, Zen Energy, will then contact Rate Setter with providing information well, in terms of a final invoice, evidence that the installation has occurred, and then we pay the subsidy amount to them. 
If you're a financing customer at that point in time, we just match that invoice amount on your final amount to your loan contract, and then your loan will start one month after that period. So obviously in the solar industry, it is very common that you can get approved today, and your installation might not be booked in for another six or eight weeks. That is very common in the industry. So at least that way, for peace of mind, you know you can be approved for your subsidy, approved for your finance, and then wait, waiting for your installation to occur. So as mentioned, um, you will receive what's known as a quote record. Uh, effectively, this is an example of the email that you would receive um, from uh, Zen Energy by the time you've completed it. As you'll see, there's a section at the top which just effectively shows you to review your quote record, and it will take you back to the home battery scheme to be able to see the details in terms of the cost of the system, the subsidy you are going to be able to get entitled to as well. Um, and also there's an apply for finance button on the bottom there as well. Now most of that information you're going to know anyway. Zen Energy are going to have explained it to you anyway. This is effectively just a record to be able to go and accept it. Now, if you were to look, uh, to, look to apply for finance, um, I'm just going to show you through a very basic step-by-step -step process. Now, our entire finance application is all done online. There is nothing paper. Uh, effectively, the first section is what's known as our rate estimate. So again, back to peer-to-peer -peer lending and the, and the way that we operate, I can't just tell you your fees right now. Every single person will be different in, in the room. And again, it's back to the scale and, and the understanding of peer-to-peer -peer lending. So what we encourage everyone to do is what's known as our rate estimate. So it's a no obligation quote at this point in time. It's not even an inquiry on your credit file. Effectively, we just want to give you the information to see what your loan was going to cost before you even progress with the loan. So effectively, if you complete this, it'll take you no more than one minute. You put some very basic details. It'll then generate what's known as your personalised rate estimate. At this point in time, it's going to generate you a couple of key things. It's going to determine, firstly, if you made your minimum monthly repayment, how much interest would you pay over the course of the loan? It's then going to de declare to you the two main fees and charges that we charge um, a, a customer. We charge what's known as a credit assistance fee, which is a standard lender fee, and that will vary dependent on the amount you borrow and the term you do it over. Generally, it sits around two to $300 on average. The different fee that we charge in terms of peer-to-peer -peer lending is what's known as a risk assurance charge. Now, we charge an individual a fee based on their level of risk to pay their loan. How that's calculated, there's multiple different levels of factors that can go into that, including credit score, credit profiling, multiple different factors, but it can actually be all done electronically by you com simply completing this rate estimate. The way that peer-to-peer -peer lending in terms of how that's different to a traditional bank, a traditional bank would actually just factor that into your interest rate. So we actually keep it out because the reason why you do that, you'll actually pay less interest over the course of the loan. So a traditional bank would generally factor some sort of risk rating into that interest rate. That's how we're different in terms of peer-to-peer -peer lending. We would just separate it as a traditional fee. We also do charge a monthly fee as well, uh, which again can vary depending on the, um, the loan term and amount you do, but in the renewable industry sector that we have, it varies from $3 to $5. The main reason why we do this, it's very obviously unique that we're going to give you all the information before you apply for a loan, is we know that that's the best way to be receptive to lending. It actually, if you can get, get all the information up, up front, you'll make a better decision on whether it's right for you. And again, the, the other main reason why we do this is we, that's effectively your worst case scenario because if you made your minimum month for a payment, that's the total cost of your loan. If you were to pay your loan out early, so if I selected over a five-year loan term, pay it out early, you actually, there is no early termination fee with the rate set of products. So it just means that you'll be saving on the amount of interest and monthly fees you would be paying. So again, quoting back to the worst case scenario, you now know the, the worst case scenario in terms of making your minimum month for a payment, what the total cost of your loan would be. So from here, if you did decide, yep, I want to go and uh, um, uh, complete an application with Rate Setter, uh, we just ask some very, very basic details in terms of employment. Uh, you get a chance to declare your income, uh, and you also get to declare the current liabilities that you have. Now, if everyone's been watching um, on the back of the media over the last sort of two or three months and the, the back of the Banking Royal Commission, there has been some significant changes in the finance industry, certainly a lot to do with responsible lending, a lot to do with serviceability. And one of the key um, updates um, is what's known as comprehensive credit reporting. So now on your credit file, there is certainly a lot more information in terms of current liabilities, credit cards, and available credit you have, which means a lender like Ratesetter has more access to that information rather than you declaring it. So there have been certainly a lot of changes, but again, the aspects are certainly the same. We do um, a, an income and expense verification as well. So being a, a, an ASIC um, regulated lender, we do have to conform to responsible lending guidelines. So like all lenders, we do have a criteria as well, and we need to ensure that affordability um, is paramount. 
The way that we do that, we can do it in multiple ways, obviously by obtaining pay slips and bank statements to verify your income and expenses. We do use a piece of technology to be able to do that as well. If um, people prefer to upload them manually, we do use a piece of technology to make it very quick and easy. Um, again, that can all be guided through on, on a simple application form. Now, a couple of things, um, I guess, obviously why rate set is different in terms of a point of difference. Um, we do offer some very low interest rates. So under the home battery program, the 5.5% would certainly be seen as one of the leading interest rates for an unsecured personal loan, especially in the renewable sector. Um, and again, matched by our peer-to-peer -peer lending landscape. We do provide flexible loan options. So from $2,000 up to 45,000. So even for example, you were to get a quote from Zen Energy and the system was gonna cost you $10,000 out of pocket, but you only wanted to finance 5,000, that's fine. It's purely the choice is up to you. You can make the full determination on what you'd like to do. Uh, as mentioned earlier, we do have no early exit fees or early repayment fees. So you can pay your loan out early. You can make additional repayments as you like. We give you a nice unique portal to be able to do so. It obviously just means you're gonna be paying your loan out early. Now, a couple of um, final thoughts, um, and certainly a lot of things that we do here um, facilitating the program. Um, is the home battery scheme for me, um, is the out-of-pocket expense worth it for me or worth the investment? There's certainly a lot of factors that can go into that, and, and a few of the guys have touched on that so far before. Um, but a battery might not make sense for you today. It, it's more about thinking about the long-term goal for the future. Um, and certainly, even if you don't have solar today, then I, I think we could probably all agree that nowadays it's a no-brainer to actually even take that step. What it can generally mean as well is by getting your solar installed today, you can then maybe go on a monitoring scale for the next three to six months to then maybe make that decision if the battery's for you. That might even be a longer period. It might be 12 months, it might be 24 months, but at least it's still stepping up for that next phase in terms of the future. In terms of the cost of the finance being less than the savings on your bill, um, and certainly in most instances, and we do see this nationwide, that it, it certainly should be um, smaller than the expense. But again, there's a lot of factors that can go into that. It can depend on your, your power usage and the, the size of your house. So generally what we do from a, from a lending point of view is we try to really try and connect you from a borrowing point of view compared to the cost of your utility bill and the savings that you should be making by having one of these systems installed. Because effectively all you're doing by then is mitigating that expense, uh, and again, the whole purpose of that is obviously very paramount. Uh, and what's the, the best way to find out if a battery and solar um, is right for you? Um, well, there is only one way. It's to certainly speak to a, an approved provider under this program. Um, they are all very knowledgeable, uh, and there's certainly a lot of, as, as you mentioned, there's about 73 uh, and growing numbers out there. Um, but they'll, they're the ones that will be able to do an analysis on your current property, on your current expense. Um, as mentioned, there, there is no real point coming to rate setter to try and get a proof of finance first. Speaking to, to businesses like Zen Energy, you're gonna get all that information. You're gonna be able to make that decision in terms of the savings that you are going to be able to make. And then we will then be able to complement that in terms of a finance option, if there is that available option for you not to be able to pay out of your own pocket. So um, again, we are here to help. We do have a customer service team that is actually here to field a lot of those conversations as well, but generally nine times out of 10, if you haven't spoke to a provider yet, we are gonna really encourage that you do go speak to one of them first. Uh, and that's all, thank you. Um, so I'll be here at the end as well, and if anyone has any questions, please, um, yeah, happy to help. Thank you, Graham. Um, and so, yeah, if anybody does have any specific questions about the finance elements of the program, please do get in touch with Rates that are direct. Um, either have a chat to Graham tonight or any of the details you see up there. Um, how are we doing out there? We good? Yeah. Excellent. So, what have we heard from so far? We've heard a little bit about Zen, the history about Zen, and uh, Simac Energy Australia, where we're headed for the future. Um, we've heard from uh, the government about what the scheme is and how it works and, and why it was created and the, the number of batteries available, the number of providers available. Um, we've then heard from rate setter and we've heard about sort of how the, how the finance works. So now we get into the guts of it. So we've been talking about what products are available, what they need to do, they need to be VPP enabled, those sorts of things. So that's why I'm uh, proud to start getting into the, the technical details of the night, the products of the night. Um, so we've got Sonnen and Solar Edge here. Uh, Zen Energy has been working with both of them for quite some time now. Um, so first to talk to you tonight is Nico Lurch. Uh, so Nico is Sonnen Australia's head of field sales, uh, responsible for the partner network in Australia and also in New Zealand. Um, he's been with Sonnen since 2016, initially working in sales and marketing for the European markets. 
Um, mid last year, he joined the Australian organisation to implement the go to market strategy and make Hapson a household name in Australia and New Zealand. So please welcome Nico to the stage. Uh, thank you very much, Matthew. Um, after we heard all about the important stuff, uh, I think it's time for some of the cool stuff. And um, so um, I've also got a bit of history to tell you because um, while Zen has been around for a while, uh, Zonin has so um, as well. Um, we started in um, Germany in 2009 with the first R&D uh, project um, and uh, the company was in, incorporated in 2010. So that's almost 10 years. And in the storage industry, that's um, actually some form of a dinosaur, even though it seems like a startup to some, uh, someone else. Um, for me personally, I have to admit the reason why I joined Zonen uh, and wanted to help uh, get smart energy solutions out there um, was exactly what you can read over here. Um, that's a quote from our founder, Christoph Osterman, um, and who, he stated um, that our goal is clean and affordable energy for everyone. Um, we've seen this in the past quite a bit. There's large energy corporations um, and rising energy prices. Uh, for end users, it's hard to get control over their energy bills. Uh, with solar, I think there was a really great start. Um, with batteries, we're actually getting really close at making people fully independent um, and giving you back the control over your bills, over your energy consumption. So, um, you know, a few facts. Um, we are focusing on uh, lithium batteries, um, not any lithium batteries. We're using lithium iron phosphate. It's a very particular type um, that is designed for the residential uh, application. Um, we've done so, as I mentioned, for the last nine years. And um, by now we've actually installed uh, more than 40,000 systems worldwide, which makes us the global market leader for smart energy um, batteries. Um, while we're not only working with the hardware, we're also thinking about what's the next step for those systems. And we heard already from Sam um, the reason why uh, the home battery scheme is focusing on a particular set of batteries. And that's um, one topic is the virtual power plant. And I'll come to that uh, at a later point. Um, we are a global company with offices around um, the planet. Um, you can probably see the uh, Holden factory um, in the upper right corner, on the left corner from your side. We got our head offices in Bavaria, uh, down here, and um, offices around the world um, to support the vision that I just showed you. Um, for us, it's, I think, a very important step. Uh, Australia um, is a very big solar market, and there is an importance for local support, and that's what we want to do um, by joining the South Australian manufacturers and um, being there for Zen and you as the customers, uh, making sure you get ex exactly what you want for, uh, from us. We've been working for a while, as I mentioned, and we've actually done a few systems, um, and we've gone through uh, quite some um, innovation cycles. Since 2016, we've been offering um, the eighth generation in Australia. A system is the most sold, most installed, most reliable Zon battery that we've ever um, introduced. Um, since then, there has been um, a ninth generation offered a few months ago. We started with um, a hybrid system. Um, I'm not going to go into too much of the technical details of the different types of batteries because I believe that um, the Zen uh, team is best to advise you on what fits your particular house. Just beware that um, we have multiple solutions just depending on what you in your particular house uh, hold require. Um, my marketing uh, team likes, you know, wants always to show some awards. Um, you know, we're doing quite well, I think. I'm not going to go into the details, um, but um, yeah, there's some recognition on what we've been doing, and I think that's, uh, at least for the employees of Zon, that's quite a proud thing that we know we're part of something that's being recognized. Um, yeah, so, I don't know, who, have, who of you has uh, passed uh, the Holden plant uh, ever while living in Adelaide? Hey, go, 
Well, next time, next time you pass, um, you might knock on the door. Um, we, um, we're actually manufacturing here. We have our full service and sales support uh, in Adelaide and the systems um, that will be uh, installed um, in South Australia will most likely come from uh, one of our um, teams over there. So the story basically, and um, I don't want to emphasize that too much, um, but I think there was an interesting thing for me when I joined uh, the Australian team, Made in Germany um, has um, quite a reputation here. Um, now, moving forward, we can't say Made in Germany anymore. It's actually designed in Germany, um, but Made in Australia. So um, I think that's uh, quite a nice um, twist to uh, our original heritage. Um, you've seen a few of the systems that we've gone through, and um, where is it all happening? And to, again, to me personally, working for this company, it's important to have some um, substance to um, you know, create some transparency. So um, we actually got 80 engineers um, in three different locations, most of them sitting in Bavaria, thinking about what could be the next best solution for the storage um, applications. And what you can see is a battery lab. Um, the, reason, the reason why we have a battery lab is because we test every battery cell we can get our hands on. So we're working with a multitude of suppliers of um, cylindrical battery cells, flat battery cells. Um, we get them in, we apply our own quality testing. We um, are very keen on getting a durable solution, a safe solution, because it's supposed to go in your household and it's supposed to work for uh, 15, 20 years. And for that, there needs to be a very rigid, uh, rigid um, qualification process. And that's what we're doing in our um, head offices. So you saw the various um, systems, uh, the generations we've gone through. Um, we're not only focusing on a battery, which is, has become sort of a synonym for the actual solution that ends up in uh, your household together with um, your solar system, there's more to it. So we call them the smarts. You just need something else but a cell, because a cell by itself is just you know, a dumb thing that sits in the corner and just does nothing. What you need is an energy manager that decides when the system charges and discharges. Uh, you need a meter to understand um, where you're at in consumption and production, so you get some transparency for you as a customer, um, but also um, yeah, I guess uh, for the energy retailer that wants to use your system later for a virtual power plant, for example, needs to know exactly what's happening in the system. So what we've done, basically, we've, used, we've taken all of these components, we designed them into a single system, and we put it all in one box. Um, it's as simple as that. Though, you will find that there's a multitude of options out there that will still offer you something like this. Now, for us, there's a particular reason why we want to do that. And that is, again, having our customers in mind, is we want to create a transparent, a easy to use, and a reliable solution. And what it basically means is you become a um, customer of Zen with his own battery, and you have one connection for your warranty, for your service, and for the whole experience that you're going through. And um, we provide a 10-year uh, warranty on all the components that are part of that smart system inside. Um, well, I kind of formulated a few reasons why, in my point of view, uh, there's five reasons why Sonnen is the right choice. Um, I would have to leave it to you, uh, though, to pick those that uh, fit you uh, best. And um, if we just go through lithium iron phosphate, again, I said that before, it's the chemistry used for re residential applications. This is what you want um, in your household. It's long-lasting, uh, long it's durable, um, and it's safe. Um, we've got our own little battery testing lab, and this is what it spits out uh, as part of its testing, is you can see on um, the vertical, uh, you can see the percentage of uh, depth of discharge. That's basically how much of my system am I able to use. For example, a um, 10 kilowatt hour battery 
with 100% depth of discharge can be used fully. You can discharge it to 0%. A 10 kilowatt hour with 90% depth of discharge, you can discharge down to 10%. So you can use actually 90% of the whole system. Um, that's what you can see on the left side. Um, on the bottom, that's simulating age, and we cannot simulate a 20 year uh, life, obviously, by actually doing the 20 years. We do have to um, artificially um, use the system as if it was um, being used for 10 years or for 20 years. And we do that by cycling. So we charge and discharge multiple times a day, and we test how many times can we actually utilize the system for the household. And you can see about 5,000, uh, 4,500 cycles over here, so about half what um, Zonen is warranting um, under our warranty. So we give a 10-year, 10 10,000 cycle warranty. So over here we got about half. And the two systems, the two lines that are tested on the top are the two battery modules uh, we're currently using, all based on lithium iron phosphate. The rest of them is comparable lithium technologies. Um, it's um, nickel, manganese, cobalt um, combinations that are used for uh, mobile applications, for your smartphones, for your laptop, um, for e-vehicles. Um, and yet again, the strongest ones and the green line uh, and the two next ones also fit in that profile. Those are lithium ion phosphate ones. Um, I mentioned the intelligence, the components that get put together. So what Zonen has been doing is not only looking at the hardware, but also how do we utilize the hardware. And um, 20 of those 80 engineers that are working um, for Zonen are actually software developers. So they look at what is it that we can do for increasing self-consumption in the household? What makes your system more efficient than a comparable um, other system? So it's all about maximizing self-consumption. It's about allowing you real-time access to your data. Uh, we have an app. We have a portal. So um, any time of day you check in and you usually get sort of a 30-second um, um, time frame in which the system updates so you, you always know what's happening. Imagine you're sitting at, at work, the sun is shining, and you're wondering whether your battery is actually charging. You get out of your app, take a look, and you will see it's actually powering up at the moment. Um, then um, time of use, something that uh, looks like it's becoming more popular among uh, energy providers is actually give you a differential pricing depending on the time of day that you are using energy. So if there's a time um, in the morning or in the afternoon where typically many households require energy, prices go up. Um, and then at times where nobody else uh, would be using energy, maybe four o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, everybody's sleeping, then the prices are down. What our system allows you is actually to charge from the grid on purpose in those times where there's cheap energy available and possibly discharge actively at times where there's high energy uh, tariffs um, that would you know, um, be a burden on your pocket. So the system helps you, again, mitigate for some of the cost um, issues that you're facing. <clears throat> um, yeah. In terms of, um, I think trust is an issue um, that um, some, some might have, um, especially in the battery industry. There's a lot of uh, players out there. We saw there's 188 systems being provided. Um, I think I can confidently say uh, we've been around for a while and um, we've done our due diligence on the systems we're providing and we're working with companies like Zen who do the same. And we've been working with Zen actually <coughs> since um, our first days in Australia. And um, as you can see, we're still working together, so something must be working out. Maybe you your first system. There you go. We actually, they actually installed our first system. So, um, yeah. Let's see. So, and again, uh, since a few months ago, we are, we are local. We actually started um, setting up the factory um, in the old Holden plant um, in October. And in January, our first um, Australian-made systems left um, our production facility. So for uh, a couple of months now, we are um, being able to actually put the Australian made sticker on the batteries. So uh, I think that's a, that's a neat, really nice accomplishment, at least for us. It's the third production facility in the whole world that we are ready to set up. So we're manufacturing <clears throat> in Bavaria, in Atlanta, in the US, and uh, since very recently also here. 
Mm. How am I on the time? Close. <laughs> well, I guess that's it then. All right, just, kidding. just kidding. No, 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 just kidding. I got a little bit more. Um, so, um, I'm just going to touch on this because I don't want to go too much into detail. That's a conversation you, um, you should definitely have um, with, uh, with the Zen team as well as the Zonon team, depending on the product you're looking at. Um, we're not only doing the hardware, we're also doing the smarts and we are doing virtual power plants. So we are already utilizing the assets in the field, that's what we call the Zon batteries that are actually deployed, um, to create services um, and offer them to grid operators and therefore mitigate for costs that um, might be incurred you know, rising energy prices or something and they usually um, get fed back into um, building more grid, uh, making sure that the increasing power demand is actually um, t supplied um, or the strain from renewable energy sources that ends up in the grid is mitigated for. This is where virtual power plants help and um, basically save the grid. Um, and we do that with a very simple method. We offer an energy tariff. So everyone with a Zon battery may or may not, that's completely up to you, join one of our tariffs. Um, there's currently three packages available <clears throat> and they are entirely dependent on your solar size and your battery size. So what happens? You choose a particular solar system and a particular Zon battery you unlock a yearly energy allowance. So you basically get, if for example, if you look at the economy package, seven and a half thousand kilowatt hours uh, usage at no cost outside of your monthly subscription fee. So we flatline the costs for 7,500 kilowatt hours per year. If you bring with you a Zon battery of at least eight kilowatt hours usable um, and a five kilowatt uh, peak solar system. If you get outside of that, if you have 8,000 kilowatt hours, you pay for the extra kilowatt hours outside of the package um, at a rate that is usually 10% less than uh, your average um, comparable energy tariff that you would get from another retailer. And what you basically do is um, if you have no solar yet and you have the roof space, um, look at your energy, uh, your energy consumption first, so you, you check whether you fall into one of those categories, and then um, basically get a quote for a system that fits that package uh, if you want to join the zone flat. If you've got more questions about this, um, we have a team um, sitting in Adelaide in Elizabeth. Um, they're happy to take your call and guide you through um, some of the questions that you might have, um, and also together with the Zen team, find um, the best solution in your particular case. Zone flat might not work for everyone. You might have less consumption um, than any of our packages. You might have significantly more. That's fine. As I said, Zone flat is an additional um, service that you can get on top of your Zone battery. You will have to change though from your existing energy retailer to Zone flat. Otherwise, it's not working, obviously. Um, now, just to quickly touch on virtual power plant, um, who of you? thinks they have an idea what a virtual power plant is. Oh, there's a few hands, there's a few hands. All right, someone from Zonon also raised their hands. <laughs> um, so, in a few sentences, it's basically using a lot of small systems. Those are the little houses that you see inside of um, the map of Australia. Using all of those small systems, putting them together with the software and making them a virtual one big plant. So you aggregate all these small systems and you virtually create one large one. You just add the capacities um, and then you offer that as a service to charge or discharge to the grid operator. So what they do is, okay, you got one megawatt of um, storage capacity. We need you to charge at this particular time um, your one megawatt from the grid. What we can do is we push a button and all of those batteries at the same time charge a few watts or discharge a few watts. And it looks like as if one large system would actually take some energy out of the grid or put it back into the grid. Um, 
Due to the 10,000 cycles that you get with our zone battery, you actually have a system that is equipped to provide these services on top of your own consumption and your own cycling that you're going through. So that is important um, for people to understand is um, while you start offering um, your system as part of a, of a larger something and it's getting utilized, your system is actually perfectly equipped for that. Otherwise, we would not have taken um, the, I guess, step in offering that. And um, I'm not sure about the biogas in Australia, but just to make you understand, the cows over there represent biogas uh, production. So <laughs> we're not using the actual cows. <laughs> um, I'm going to be around here. So if there's uh, people interested in this, I'm happy to have a chat. Um, and I've got another colleague sitting over there, James, if you just raise your hand. Um, so brought someone else with me from Zonen. Um, if you have questions on this, we're happy to uh, provide you with some more background information. Um, yeah, you saw the table. Um, again, we're happy to provide some more background, especially um, if you do not like your current energy retailer, you might want to join us. Um, the point is we're sharing energy. We're actually making sure that the people that join Zonen uh, Flat are part of our Zonen community, which is basically a sharing platform. Um, and um, yeah, that's what Zonen is about. And we have two lines of products uh, currently available um, that Zen is offering. There's the Eco line, <clears throat> perfect for retrofit. You have an existing solar, you go for an Eco uh, battery, and if you're thinking about getting a new uh, solar system, then the hybrid might just be the uh, system to go uh, with. And because we saw that from uh, Sam, um, I believe the most, uh, the most popular systems are 9 to 13 kilowatt uh, hours at the moment. Um, one fun thing, we actually do a modular system. So it scales between 5 and 15 uh, kilowatt hours, um, depending on what you need. And it's always 2.5 kilowatt hour increments. So it's uh, five, seven and a half, ten, twelve and a half, fifteen. So again, we look at your household, what do you require, and that's what you're gonna get. Sorry for taking more time, <laughs> but I thought the cool stuff might, you know, deserve it. <laughs> Thanks. Is it wrong to say that I thought I didn't think it would be the German that would run over time? <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, with I think Nico is actually a good example of, of Sonnen, a bit of a German heart and, and some South Australian roots. Um, so Sonnen, as I said before, it's a it's a great product, and, and we're happy to have them on board and part of our range. Um, please remember that you do have brochures in those gift bags tonight with a bit more information. Um, and if you want to hear a bit more about Sonnen through Zen, fill out the request to quote forms. Uh, they're in there and leave them with someone from Zen on your way out tonight. Um, our final guest for this evening is Alan Collar. Um, so Alan is the Business Development Director of Grid Services for SolarEdge, um, a leading provider of intelligent inverter solutions. Uh, Alan's got over 25 years of experience in energy, financial services, social housing and technology industries, quite varied. Um, he leads SolarEdge's development of grid services in Australia and in New Zealand. Alan's passionate about effective disruption and accelerating the transition to a low carbon electricity system uh, while maintaining resilience and economic value for customers. Uh, so last but not least, please join me in welcoming Alan to the stage. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks everyone for making the time to come out this evening. It's really uh, rewarding as a product supplier to see so many people with strong interest. Um, particularly in the evolution of this market, we've seen some real success in Australia around solar and we're hoping to see that sec success push out into uh, the energy storage market and we're seeing some great initiatives obviously here in South Australia. To stand here now, who knows SolarEdge as a brand? Not many people. And that's, that's pretty interesting for me. Um, I've been in the industry for over 10 years in renewable energies, 
and uh, don't hold it against me, but I did work for seven years in Origin Energy, um, and we were uh, trying to lead the market in solar and distributed energy resources. So we did some great work with that, but it is a big beast of a company. Um, Solar Edge, I was a customer of Solar Edge for some years, and I really liked the technology and transferred across to the business here. And part of that was to take the flexibility of the hardware and look at it as the software component. So the VPP component, or what we call grid services. But really, what we're about is innovation and change, and really driving that change for positive energy outcomes. So sustainable energy outcomes, affordable energy outcomes. One of the things that I find really interesting around Solar Edge and people not knowing so much about the brand is just where we are. So we've got nearly, oh, well, nearly now a million sites monitored around the world with Solar Edge systems installed. We're in 25 countries. We are a strong technology company. We've got 140 awarded patents. We've got nearly 200 patents pending. Uh, we've got about 1,400 employees. <coughs> We've shipped around 1.3 million inverters um, and we've shipped nearly 31 million optimizers. Now those last two numbers are pretty important and I'll tell you why, because it's our core technology. If we think about this, um, we work with over 20,000 installers globally, so we're pretty aware of what happens in the market. We're pretty aware of what has to deliver a quality product to you as owners of the systems. Um, we have regional service centres um, and we are installed in over 133 countries, so we are installed in most environments. We're the world's largest single phase PV inverter manufacturer. So it's not just us saying it, it's IHS, which is an independent research uh, body that does that. Okay, enough about us there. I'm going to start talking about what our product is and how it works. All right, a traditional inverter. Traditional inverter um, has some limitations around it. If we think about that, it has a string in place and most of the systems have to operate where it works on a lowest common denominator. So if you've got one panel on a roof that's operating at a lower level, underperforming, it drags down all the rest of the panels. So that was an issue uh, when our founders were looking at it. They're actually getting around what was one of the benefits around that. So energy loss was a key issue. Design flexibility. With a standard string system, you are generally putting solar into a consistent array. Single systems, it's quite limited. Low resolution monitoring. Generally, at best, you can see what's happening in the inverter, maybe individual arrays, not the individual panels. And safety hazards. So we see with the systems to come off the roof, cabling coming down, uh, there's uh, some high voltages uh, at the module level, even when isolators are switched off. Solar Edge started to fix some of this system by putting in what we call a power optimizer. The power optimizer goes in and sits behind each of the modules. That allows us to actually see what's happening on each module. It also allows those modules to operate effectively as individual components operate to their optimum rather than their minimum. We connect that with an inverter that works on the, on, the, uh, on the wall. That inverter has the DC to AC inversion components on it, our communication hubs, and it's also our smart. It's the intelligent box that sits there. And that operates with our system and allows the maximum outcome. <coughs> the power optimizer is warranted for 25 years, so we back that on the roof for 25 years. That's product and labor to swap over. The inverter is warranted for 12 years on the side of the wall. The monitoring platform, which gives you down to, and you can just see there, individual panels that you're looking at, information of what's happening on your system, that's free of charge for the life of the product. So it's not a bad system in terms of the way that we look at that and how it operates. We go a step further. Maximising self-consumption is a really critical issue. Getting the most out of your solar. How do you think about that? So Solar Edge has, obviously, our... Uh, core system of the optimizer and inverter that enables PV. We then worked on storage. We've had partners such as Tesla, we have LG Chem currently as our, our main partner, 
and we'll be expanding across that in the future. We have a backup capability that works if the grid goes out. We have device control to make sure that you can maximise the energy use behind the meter. So that could be uh, an electric hot water system where we can divert solar energy to that system. It could be dry contact switches to run a pool pump. We have an EV charger that's been out in the US and in Europe for some time. It's going through final testing for Australia at the moment. So there's ways around this system of actually thinking about it and integrating it. Behind all of that, when we have it in combination and working inside a house, is a VPP capability, our grid services capability. So we are working with uh, a number of retailers in Australia at the moment. So we cover about uh, retail plans for about 40% of the market at the moment. And hopefully by the end of the year, we'll be around 60% of the plans that are in market. But we work with that and it gives you choice and flexibility over the type of retailer that you'd like to work with. So ultimately, we look at more energy. So we get the optimum out of the panels. We reduce the lifetime cost because you can actually see what's going on with your system across the life. It's got alerts. We can see when uh, an individual panel's not working. The optimizer allows the rest of the system to continue operating if one optimizes out. Enhanced safety and flexible design. Just to give a quick view here, if we think about this, this shows one single array, 16 panels on a single day across a couple of hours and you can see the variance there. Now that's only 14 watts between the minimum and the maximum. It doesn't seem like much, but across a year, you can actually see that there's an impact of $100 to $200 on a system. And if you think about that for charging batteries as well, that's extra energy that should be going into your battery or being consumed behind the meter. So it's, again, we are looking at getting the most out of the system rather than running your system. Oh, sorry, press the wrong button there. Rather than running your system down the bottom. I'll leave that one and come back. Finally, point for me on the actual uh, solar array itself is the safety. What this means is if there's a loss of communication between our inverter on the wall and the optimizers that are happening on the roof, each of those panels will only go to one volt. So if you have any issues around the cabling or anything like that that's coming down, you've got 16 panels on the roof, you're only getting 16 volt come down. You'll know it if you've touched it, but you're not going to die from that type of issue. Okay, the store edge solution is our core solution uh, for energy storage. It provides backup. Um, it's a really strong link. It comes in a five kilowatt or six kilowatt uh, inverter. It's connected to the Res Resu 10 H LG Chem battery, which is a solid operator. Um, it's got, again, the design flexibility component around it. We can connect it into the VPP. We can connect it into the smart home energy platform, so the other devices that can be used around the house. And we've got longer warranties on the inverter itself. So it's 12 years on the inverter component. Um, one of the things that we do like to talk about is the extra PV capacity because it is a DC coupled system. So that means that we're allowed to pass, or we do pass energy through the inverter, straight through into the battery. Uh, and I'll use this slide to actually talk about it a bit more. So if you see here, that allows you to have a larger solar array on your roof and be passing that energy straight through into the, the uh, battery component. So this section up here, if you're thinking about it, is the solar on the roof that is coming through and powering your home. This component here is going straight through our power electronics. It sits in the bottom of the storage system into the battery. So this is charging straight through DC run into the battery. This is running straight through into the, into the house. The component we have with that is then if the grid goes down, you have backed up loads. So around the house, you can have that backup component or we can feed the loads or we can actually have nighttime supply. So after the solar array is finished operating, it gives you that choice and flexibility of the system. Okay, just going to talk a little bit around um, LG Chem. LG Chem is a household name. Everyone tends to know about LG Chem. 
Um, they've got around 10,000 batteries installed in Australia at the moment, uh, about 130,000 batteries installed globally. Um, in 2017-18, they did about 7.5 gigawatt hours worth of energy storage systems globally. They work with huge brands globally. So they work in IT and new applications, phone systems, uh, tools. They work in energy storage systems uh, with us, with others. They work with automotive. So they are a, a well-structured, uh, effective, brand that's well tested. We do a lot of testing, so well, LG Chem does a lot of testing in terms of the way that they operate and have a safe and trusted brand. And they're recognised as a leader in lithium ion battery for grid storage. And that recognition comes from both the strategy and the way they execute. So it's how they talk about it, but what they do about it as well. Overall, um, what we are looking at is the Resu 10H coupled with the Solar Edge storage system. It's a great system, it's got good, good specifications, it's at a good price, um, and I would encourage you to have a chat to the folk from Zen about it. Um, just to wrap up, uh, for me, I've been really quite impressed about the scheme that's, that's come together in South Australia. So I think from a, a government point of view, we've got a great structured incentive program. So we've seen a number of programs come together across the last decade, and this has been well thought through and well enacted. For rate setter, there's a secure landing platform. Um, there's a robust platform for choice and getting through and good control over the provider uh, and selection criteria. We see both with Solar Edge and our competitors in the marketplace. Com competition is great. It gives you, as customers, choice. Um, you have a great choice of product, and you have a great quality of product in Australia at the moment. And that's really important for confidence in this marketplace. And the final piece that I'd say is, uh, in providers such as Zen Energy, you've got expertise allowing informed choice. So I'd encourage you again to have good conversations, get in touch with them, and really talk to them about what you've got, what you need, and what's really suitable for you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Alan. Um, so Solar Edge is also an important part of our home battery storage range. Um, we refer to it as a Zen Hybrid, so in the gift bags tonight you'll see some brochures for Zen Hybrid, so please do take a look. Uh, and again, much like Sonnen, uh, if you've heard something tonight that interests you and you'd like to learn a bit more, uh, please fill out the form and leave it with a Zen representative on your way out. Um, so I'm sure that you've all found tonight's presentations informative, so can you please uh, join me once more in thanking all of our speakers for tonight? Uh, Angela DeFabio from NDI Flinders. Uh, Richard Turner from Zen Energy, Sam Crafter from the Department of Energy and Mining, uh, Graeme Galletley from Ratesetter, Nico Lurch from Sonnen, and Alan Collar from Solar Edge. Now, with the small amount of time we've got left, I will say that we do need to be out of the building from nine o'clock uh, for security, but we do have a little bit of time uh, for, for Q&A. Um, so it's now uh, your chance uh, to ask any questions uh, that you have. Um, so the time is quite short, so please do keep your questions uh, to one per person so that we can get through as many as possible in the time. Uh, so if you have a question, please raise your hand. We've got some microphones around um, so you can, uh, everybody can hear you. There must be one question. <laughs> Gentleman here. Yeah, thanks very much for the presentations. Uh, they were really informative. The um, the pay the, the time for uh, getting it all back was mentioned, say, uh, in ten plus years to twenty years uh, payback. Uh, how much of that is going to depend on how much money is borrowed? For example, that would, would surely increase the payback time if there's no money that needs to be borrowed but people who just pay for it straight up top, does that mean that the, the payback is uh, 
is much shorter. Uh, By yeah. how much? Yeah, look, I, I think the answer is that if you do take finance, of course, the, the payback will be a little bit longer, um, depending on the, the rate of interest and how much you borrow. Uh, and that's why we find it very important to say that when it comes to, to the finance side of things, um, talk directly to rate setter or, or take your own personal um, uh, opinion or guidance. Um, when it comes to the, the, the paybacks uh, that, that we provide um, in our estimates, it is based on an outright purchase. Um, so any, uh, any cost of finance on top of that uh, will be something for you to consider. Right, that, that answered the question, I think, that last bit you said. Any other questions? I hope I haven't scared anybody by saying we've only got a short amount of time. Another question up here. Uh, hi, Chris Russell here. Um, just wanted to check uh, with the VPP, if you're joining a virtual power plant such as Son and Flat or something like that, uh, what are the implications for the feed-in tariff that you may get from the retailer? Um, do you still qualify for that or is, is the arrangement uh, purely through the VPP? Nico, if you care to ask. I'll try that. Yeah, that works. Um, so I can only speak for the Zone VPP, obviously, for the Zone Flat, and um, we do provide a feed-in tariff for the energy that you um, sort of provide on top of the energy that you use yourself. So whatever you feed in as an excess, you will get some uh, remuneration for that. So it's not, not just being taken away. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, so we work with a number of retailers that have different sort of plan structures, um, some of which they will pay you a monthly fee, a remuneration for actually being part of the VPP. Uh, and depending on when and what is actually being fed back in is depending on the tariff that you would ac access to. Um, the other structures that we've seen have been an upfront incentive, similar to what the government is paying you. Um, and that means that then after you actually have that and en enrol in it, the feed-in tariff is just paid as normal through that program. But they would have access to some of the energy through the energy storage device. It really is something that you need to just have a look at and there's a level of flexibility that you can have across those plans and they are developing. They are all nascent at the moment, so it's early days for the VPPs. Another question a bit further up. All right, this is for Sonam. So with the batteries that are produced here in Adelaide, how are the components, are they actually, what is manufactured here or what is just brought in and put together here or are we actually producing parts of the internals here as well? Yeah, so um, I think one important thing about Zon is we are technology agnostic um, except for the software. That means we always look for the best parts that comprise the full system. That's the whole battery lab um, purpose. So um, we're using um, a couple suppliers for the inverters inside of the systems, as well as for the battery cells. Um, and on one of the slides, you could actually uh, see that um, Sony was listed there. So um, some of the battery modules we're using come directly from Sony. Um, and then we have other um, suppliers that we're using for, for those systems as well. So in terms of manufacturing in Adelaide, um, we're getting some of the key components who, um, who are manufactured um, outside of Australia in, uh, put them together and uh, make sure that the system uh, works for the Australian market. Right. I believe there might have been a question a bit further up. What sort of time frames are you looking at if someone says, yep, we're going to go ahead with it um, and there might be a mass run for uh, in installation? At this stage, can anyone give estimations as to how long it would take to go from this point to having something that's giving us energy? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so with Sonnen and Solar Edge, both at the moment, um, with customers who are purchasing today, we're seeing installations within two to three months. Um, and generally, the, the, the longest period of waiting is getting the approval from uh, SA Power Networks in, and arranging uh, things through your energy retailer. Um, so the products are, are in stock, they're available now, um, and so a, a typical time frame, so eight to 12 weeks. 
just quickly, that's uh, one of the things that uh, each of the providers have to put up on our website is their installation time. We obviously monitor and check performance against that as well. So, yeah. Uh, is there another question down here at the front? Just a bit of an industry question. I know that this is the SA battery scheme, but there is a demand management program that was put in yeah. as well. Sure. And I understand that that tender um, will be announced or some sort of, there's a deadline. Is that this month or last month or what's, what's going on? Yeah, so there's a, um, there's a range of uh, other elements to the, the commitments that were around, made around energy. One was grid scale storage fund and that's uh, closed and there's um, about 50 different proposals that are being evaluated and the uh, demand trial um, also ran an open process for people to be able to um, come up with solutions. Um, there's an $11 million fund associated with that. Uh, that has also is under evaluation. Uh, that's actually not being done within my team, but I know that they're well underway, and I don't know exactly when. I think the rough target's been about the middle of the year for that to come be, be done. And so demand management is using your virtual power plant in a, I, I guess, a more exciting way than just under someone else pulling the, the pins on that. So you, you get to, uh, to decide your behaviour. Yeah, that's right, and I guess what we're looking for is a range of, uh, and what we've had come in, as I understand it, is a range of innovative solutions, and really what we're trying to do is catalyse some of those more um, new solutions or innovative solutions to enable more value through that demand management. Uh, another question just down here. Yeah, firstly, uh, thanks very much to all of the speakers. It was uh, very informative. Um, my wife, Jane, and I are, are building um, with Pete in the new Tonsley uh, village. Um, so a couple of questions I've got is, um, will someone like Zen be able to work, I guess, with Pete and rendition the builders to look at the design of our home and do a quote based on the house is not built yet? It's uh, due to the foundations are supposed to be going down in the coming weeks. Um, if that's a possibility, I'm going to fill out the form here. And also, my second question is is to the actual battery scheme. Is there an end date for that? Is there an end date for that? Uh, no, there's not. Uh, well, we're trying to have the program rolled out with a target of uh, over the four-year period, um, but there's not a, not a fixed end date. Um, what we're obviously trying to judge is the amount that is offered through the subsidy will change over time, as I was talking about, depending on uptake and, and all of that. But in terms of building a new home, that is an option as well. You're able to do it uh, and then run through the process of building and, and, and have the subsidy paid through that process. So there is an option from the scheme perspective and obviously Richard will be able to talk more about from a Zen perspective. Yeah, yeah um, look, Tonsley very excitingly is going to be Australia's first, and you obviously know, um, mixed use energy precinct, which is fantastic. So it's like a big micro grid within the commercial buildings, the residential precinct, the university buildings, and we're going to be generating all our energy, or a lot of our energy, on site. So we're about to roll out around five megawatts of solar. There'll be hydrogen production on site that'll be injected into the gas lines. It'll start to decarbonise your gas in the precinct. There's a whole range of initiatives and in R&D going on. In terms of directly answering your question, in an energy precinct, there obviously needs to be a, a tight balance between the generation and, and demand for energy, and a company called N-Wave is managing that. So I'm not quite up to speed with uh, what... I, I think there is individual allowances for various homes on who can put solar on and how much, so it's probably a discussion to have with the, the precinct managers with N-Wave, um, so I can't directly answer that question. But the initiative that's going on here is remarkable and, and hopefully will produce a significantly lower cost of energy and clean energy. And, uh, and hopefully one day soon, as I said in the introduction, with Zen doing our work at the industrial, we're now a, an energy retailer, generator, consumer and retailer at the industrial level and bringing prices down considerably for industrial companies. And I'm hoping one day soon uh, we'll be able to come to you as an energy retailer being able to provide you energy, because the balance of energy that you still buy in from the grid's got to come from you know, somewhere, um, and we're hoping we can provide that direct from our large-scale generation here in South Australia. So fingers crossed we'll be able to come to you as a retailer soon as well. Yeah. Thank you. And welcome to the community. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Are you, you're amongst the first that are moving in in June or July, or are you? Stage, stage two. Stage two, okay. So probably Fantastic. 
Oh, question from that side. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got a, a Zen system on our roof, and we've got the minimum amount of panels to make it work. So we've got a five kilowatt system, and we've got 32 panels on there. So if we lose a panel and it goes down, we're not producing any electricity. So we, we, we want to put some more panels on there. Um, Zen, when, when it was going through, Zen didn't want to sign us up until they worked out because they were going through with the government, which was creating a little bit of a headache that our system could go up to 64 panels, and, but we only had the 32. And would we be allowed to um, put extra panels on later on without um, interfering with our feed-in tariff. Now, it came through that, yes, we could put those panels on, but you know how the government twists things and reneges and changes things. I was just wondering if you knew if there'd been any changes, because we are looking at putting some more panels on soon, so... Well, I would suggest that um, maybe if I can get your details before you leave tonight and we'll, we'll discuss that and make sure that your individual circumstances are, are, are taken care of. Yeah. Um, yeah. I th so, so you're on the, uh, like a 44 cent feed in tariff or, or Some, higher? Yeah, yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. My, my understanding is you can, depending on what the inverter, I mean, the regular, like, you're right, the regulations at the time were just changing constantly and it was hard for us all to keep up with it. But whatever your inverter is registered at, I believe, is what you can go up to. And if you've been given the go-ahead to expand your panels, you can. But if you add a battery to your system, that's a system change, and that nullifies your feed-in tariff. Yeah, we want to add the battery, but we might just have to wait for a yeah. while until yeah. either So I believe, ends believe or the, yeah, the, the battery will unfortunately end your feed-in tariff, yeah. Yeah. from what so I understand. We, we yeah. figured we might just add the panels on and reap the reward there and... Yeah. And it's a question we often get asked, you know, I've got a feed-in tariff, should I put a battery on or not? The, the question you need to look at is on your energy bill, are you earning an income from your feed-in tariff? Because going back, you know, five, ten years when the feed-in tariff was active, a lot of people put one, 1 1.5, 2 kilowatt systems on their roofs that you're self-consuming all that energy. You're not actually pushing a lot out into the grid. If you're actually on your bill, you've got an income from excess power for your feed-in tariff, great. And if you're happy with that, great. But if you're not earning an income from the feed-in tariff, then you might as well throw it away. It's not actually earning you any money. Um, so it depends on how... Your working very well, thanks. We're not going to change it. Yeah, so. yeah. You, I mean, five kilowatts is unusual for, for that time. So you've done well. Um, but a lot of people that, at that time put in smaller systems. So if you're not actually producing excess power and selling it to the grid, there's not much point in the feed-in tariff. So then you can make the decision to put a bigger system on. And when you've got a battery, obviously, you want to be producing enough power for day and night, so you've got that excess power to put into the battery. Okay, so I hope that it sort of makes that a bit clearer. 